severe northern drought, ants scorched by heat, southern floods trigger mudslides. For U.S. teachers attacked in Jilin, Beijing responds quietly, experts analyze causes. China's May inflation signals weak consumer demand, analysts, shaky economy. EU imposes tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles, up to 38.1%. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Severe northern drought, ants scorched by heat, southern floods trigger mudslides. In many northern areas in China, there is ongoing severe hot and dry weather, with crops in regions like Hunan, Shandong, and Anhui suffering from extreme water shortages. In a video circulating online recently, a man is seen holding a slice of watermelon rind teeming with ants. He says, I want to show you whether it's hot or not, how high the temperatures in Hunan really are. He then throws the watermelon rind onto the ground. After the rind lands, the ants are dislodged to the ground. These ants move quickly for a few seconds before they stop moving altogether. The man remarks, the ants have died from the heat. According to Baidu Zhidao, ants can withstand temperatures up to 40 degrees Celsius and will die instantly at temperatures between 60 to 65 degrees Celsius. As previously reported, according to the China Weather Network, since June 9th of last week, temperatures have been between 35 degrees Celsius and 39 degrees Celsius in many parts of mainland China, with some localities experiencing temperatures over 40 degrees Celsius. In some areas of Hunan province, the temperature of the road surface has exceeded 60 degrees Celsius. Elephant News reports that the weather forecast map for Hunan province has been scorched red. At 8 a.m. on June 12, the Hunan Provincial Climate Center released an orange drought warning. The warning stated that, based on the latest meteorological drought monitoring, severe drought conditions have been recorded at 72 national meteorological stations across 16 cities in Hunan province. These conditions have persisted for 10 days. From June 12 to June 20, the drought in these areas and their surroundings is expected to intensify and expand. The ongoing drought has nearly killed the crops in Hunan fields. This drought in Hunan has quickly become a trending topic on Weibo. On various social media platforms, many users are reporting that Shandong is facing a major drought this year as well, with the Yiming area having not received significant rainfall for six months. As a result, villagers have resorted to kneeling at the Dragon King Temple to pray for rain. A netizen commented under the video, severe drought, upstream water storage not released. Once heavy rain comes after the drought, it will be a major flood, and the downstream area will suddenly become a waterlogged country. What is meant by water deep fire hot? This is what it means. The term water deep fire hot is a direct translation of the Chinese idiom, which means to be in deep distress or to live in great misery. The imagery of deep water and scorching fire is used to convey a sense of extreme suffering and hardship. Others expressed concerns, saying, a major grain-producing province has become like this. Will grain prices rise again later? Meanwhile, several regions in Guangxi and southern China have been struck by torrential rains that have triggered floods. On the morning of June 13, the Meteorological Observatory in Gilan, Guangxi, issued another red warning for torrential rain. It announced that due to the intense rainfall, all rafting services on the Li River, using rafts made of wood and bamboo, were suspended starting at 8 a.m. today. The heavy rainfall also led to river levels rising between half a meter to three meters. In contrast, Sichuan province is facing an even harsher situation, dealing with both scorching temperatures and torrential rains. According to the weather forecast from June 12 for Sichuan, from June 14 to 15, the highest temperatures in the basin area are expected to reach 35 to 38 degrees Celsius. Meanwhile, the western and southern parts of the basin are expected to receive moderate to heavy rain, with local areas experiencing torrential or extremely heavy rains along with short-lived intense rainfall and thunderstorm winds. People in these areas should be alert for potential secondary disasters like flash floods, landslides, debris flows, and collapses induced by the intense rainfall. Someone commented on X, saying, The Yellow River floodplains are always prone to extreme weather like this, it's either drought or floods. 
It has nothing to do with climate change. The Gingzi year in 1900 had a drought even worse than this one. According to public information, the Chinese use sexagenary cycles to record years. Every 60 years, there is a stem and branch combination named Gingzi, such as the years of 1840, 1900, 1960, and 2020. In 1900, the Qing dynasty was on the verge of collapse, grappling with not only natural disasters but also the Boxer Rebellion within and attacks from the Eight Nation Alliance from without. In 1911, the Xinhai Revolution erupted, leading to the Qing dynasty's demise. Another netizen remarked, ill-fated times, with continuous natural and man-made disasters, the world is suffering deeply. For U.S. teachers attacked in Jilin, Beijing responds quietly, experts analyze causes. On June 11, the international community focused its attention on the stabbing of four American teachers in Jilin, China, by an assailant wielding a sharp knife. The assailant, named Chui Mumu, was later arrested. According to Voice of America, the injured are not in life-threatening condition. The four teachers, from Cornell College in Iowa, USA, had been invited to conduct short-term teaching at Beihua University in Jilin. During a press briefing on June 11, Lin Jian, a spokesperson for the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs, referred to the local police's evaluation, describing the stabbing as an isolated event and asserting it would not hinder the normal interpersonal exchanges between the Chinese and American peoples. He further claimed that China is acknowledged as one of the safest countries globally. The incident quickly became a topic of discussion on Chinese social media, however, as usual, online discussions were soon censored, and the Chinese media's coverage of the event was minimal. Hu Shijin, former editor-in-chief of the Global Times, stated on Weibo on June 11 that the incident was accidental. His post was later removed for reasons unknown, but he continued on Platform X, stating that I condemn the attack, but this incident is an isolated one within the broader context of Chinese society. Commenting on the incident, Mr. Lai Jianping, a former Beijing lawyer and chairman of the Federation for a Democratic China-Canada, shared with Sound of Hope that while this event may appear accidental, there's an underlying inevitability. The scale of political, economic, and social crises in China is unprecedented, leading to vast resentment among those struggling to survive. He elaborated, under the CCP's authoritarian regime, many people are subjected to abuse, exploitation, and severe economic and political deprivation, as well as human rights abuses, with no means to seek justice or redress. This breeds pervasive malevolence and brutality in society. It reflects the general social climate rather than being an isolated case. Societal dissatisfaction is profound due to the intensity, depth, and widespread nature of the conflicts, making further unrest inevitable. In a functioning society, personal disputes and conflicts of interest have legal and institutional remedies that address injustices. However, in Chinese society, whether it is government infringements on human rights or public deprivations of basic freedoms, people often find no recourse for complaints or justice, leaving private redress or even retaliation against society as their only options. Therefore, I believe that whether it is a random incident or a deliberate and premeditated attack targeting foreigners, it is deeply intertwined with the overall societal atmosphere and public sentiment in China, making it inevitable. Meanwhile, Canadian Chinese writer Xing Shui commented that the aggressive wolf warrior diplomacy of the Chinese Communist Party is internationally recognized. This approach sets a behavioral standard for people in China, as the country is ruled by a totalitarian dictatorship. Consequently, Chinese citizens' choices in speech, views, and behaviors must conform to the regime's expectations. This often leads to a phenomenon where if the higher-ups show a preference for something, those below them will excessively implement it. Thus, Xin Shui does not see the individual's actions as merely coincidental. She argues that Xi Jinping's long-held antagonistic stance towards foreigners has sown a specific mindset among Chinese people, which, given the right conditions, is bound to manifest. According to the Chinese State Administration of Foreign Exchange, as of February 2023, foreign direct investment in China dropped to a 30-year low, amounting to just $33 billion last year, an 82% decline from 2022. 
this significant decrease underscores the growing lack of confidence among foreign investors in the Chinese market and highlights the challenges China faces in attracting more foreign investment. In an effort to attract foreign capital, CCP President Xi Jinping has been actively engaging with U.S. business leaders. During his visit to the U.S. in November last year, he announced plans to invite 50,000 young Americans to China for educational exchanges over the next five years. Despite these efforts, the U.S. State Department continues to issue a Level 3 travel advisory for China, advising Americans to reconsider traveling there due to risks of arbitrary detention or exit bans. Current U.S. statistics show that fewer than 900 American students are participating in exchange programs in China, whereas over 290,000 Chinese students are enrolled in U.S. institutions. Mr. Lai believes that the stabbing incident involving four American teachers in Jilin will negatively impact China's relations with the Western world, potentially making people more apprehensive about visiting, doing business with, or investing in China. Writer Xing Shui stated that the CCP has consistently treated the U.S. as an adversary. Recently, the U.S. has recognized that it was inadvertently supporting the world's largest and most authoritarian regime prompting a re-evaluation of its policies. Xi Jinping, anxious about these changes, continues to challenge the U.S. ideologically and institutionally while attempting to sow division and buy influence across various American sectors. The U.S., embodying freedom and democracy, cannot impose the same kind of restrictions on private enterprises or the public as seen in China. Despite initiating reforms in the late 1970s, China has never developed a genuine private sector or free market, these remain tightly controlled by the CCP. This incident underscores the need for the U.S. to gain a deeper understanding of China, a nation still governed by a communist totalitarian regime of terror, where anyone could potentially become a tool of the CCP's oppressive rule. China's May Inflation Signals Weak Consumer Demand, Analysts, Shaky Economy According to data from the National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, released on June 12, in May, the Consumer Price Index, CPI, rose by 0.3%, mirroring the increase from April but falling short of the 0.4% predicted by a Reuters poll. Meanwhile, the Producer Price Index, PPI, continued its decline since September 2022, dropping by 1.4% in May after a 2.5% decrease in April slightly better than the anticipated 1.5% fall due to strong exports boosting Chinese industry last month. Despite some improvements, the data suggests that the world's second-largest economy is still at risk of deflation with an uncertain economic outlook. Barclays FICC research commented on June 12 that subdued CPI and a softening core CPI reflect ongoing weakness in domestic demand and private consumption. China has been experiencing its longest period of deflation since the 2008-2009 global financial crisis, which has continued up to January 2024. The government has struggled to boost consumer spending due to a prolonged real estate downturn and a challenging labor market, and businesses are hesitant to invest because of decreasing producer prices eroding profitability. According to HSBC, recent cost increases in utilities and train tickets have dampened expectations for a quick inflation recovery, likely reducing spending on other non-essential items due to the weakening labor market and stagnant wage growth. Consumer prices have remained low since 2023 despite various support measures, with analysts suggesting that China needs a more robust fiscal and monetary stimulus to effectively boost demand. HSBC noted that the May inflation data indicates that inflation remains mild, and additional support is necessary to bolster growth, likely through fiscal policies. Experts also noted that Wednesday's core inflation data, excluding food and energy, highlights the difficulty Beijing faces in stimulating domestic demand. Although there was a rise in producer prices for the first time in eight months and consumer price inflation remained stable in May, the economy still faces significant overcapacity that could soon lead to deflation. Capital Economics stated, the recent uptick in factory gate prices is likely temporary due to overcapacity, and they are expected to resume their decline soon, keeping PPI inflation in negative territory for the rest of the year. They also observed that persistent overcapacity is likely to result in only a modest CPI inflation rebound. 
the firm points out that China's inflation data reveal a structural imbalance between supply and demand, especially in the consumer market, exacerbated by rapid production capacity increases since the pandemic began, with the value of fixed assets among manufacturers rising over 30% since 2019. Barclays noted that the Consumer Products PPI, which has been contracting for 16 months, showed minimal improvement at minus 0.8% year-over-year, a slight improvement over the previous month's 0.9% decline. They commented, the ongoing deflation in consumer goods suggests issues of weak demand and excess capacity, indicating that manufacturers may struggle to fully pass on higher input costs to consumers. Looking ahead, Barclays predicts that recovery in consumption will be hampered by labor market challenges, such as uncertain employment and income prospects, negative wealth effects, and strained household finances. As a result, Barclays has lowered its 2025 full-year CPI inflation forecast to 1.2% from 2%, reflecting prolonged drags on consumption and overall price levels. EU imposes tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles, up to 38.1%. The Chinese authorities have been exporting their surplus electric vehicles globally using dumping tactics, gaining market share in foreign automotive sectors and causing international discontent. In response, on June 12, the European Commission announced that it would impose a temporary anti-subsidy tariff of up to 38% on Chinese electric vehicle imports, effective from July 4. Manufacturers who did not cooperate with the investigation will face a 38.1% tariff while those that complied but refused sampling will face a 21% tariff. Among China's major automotive groups, BYD will be subjected to a 17.4% tariff, Geely Automobile to 20%, and SAIC Motor to the highest at 38.1% due to their low cooperation. The anti-subsidy investigation, initiated in October 2023, is scheduled to conclude on November 2 of this year. It could result in long-term tariffs, usually lasting five years, unless China and the EU can negotiate a resolution to prevent these new tariffs. Columnist Wang Yi noted that the EU has allowed Chinese electric car manufacturers to appeal these decisions. If they provide substantial reasons, adjustments may be made. However, refusal to cooperate will result in penalties based on individual assessments, testing the manufacturer's commitment to adhering to international norms and cooperating with the EU. On the same day, China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs criticized the EU's actions as violating international trade principles and exemplifying protectionism. A spokesperson from China's Ministry of Commerce warned that if no compromise is reached with the EU, China would take countermeasures. Wu Setsi, an advisor at a Taiwan think tank, noted that numerous Chinese electric cars are stockpiled at many European ports, which has significantly impacted the EU automotive market prices and caused some market damage. While China views this as protectionism, the EU regards it as a measure to promote fair trade. Mr. Wang Yi argued that the Chinese government's forceful approach has inadvertently harmed its own industries. He explained that for every additional 10% increase in tariffs beyond an initial 10%, China's car sales could decrease by about 1 billion. With China's significant overcapacity in electric vehicles, the EU's decision could severely impact China's exports to Europe, exacerbating competition within China's saturated domestic market. This situation could lead to intense market competition and necessitate major adjustments within China's electric vehicle industry. EU member states' trade ministers are required to vote by November 2 and it would take opposition from at least 11 member states to block the decision. Currently, Germany, Sweden, and Hungary have expressed their opposition, fearing Chinese retaliation. Wu Setsi remarked that the potential tariffs would impact Germany's automotive industry, which explains their cautious stance. He emphasized that the EU's stance is not against Chinese electric vehicle imports per se but against the unfair trade practices facilitated by Chinese government subsidies and support, thus the punitive tariffs. Meanwhile, Mr. Wang highlighted that due to the ineffective role of the WTO, trade conflicts are likely to intensify. The global community is now addressing what he describes as China Impact 2.0, as China, facing economic challenges, 
continues to use exports to drive economic growth, leading to the problematic dumping of cheap products worldwide. In May, the U.S. government led by increasing tariffs on Chinese electric vehicle imports to 100 percent, opposing China's unfair trade practices. Turkey followed suit in early June by announcing a 40 percent tariff on these imports. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths. Thank you.